it rained again. <laughs> It is a complete mud fest in here. I don't even want to walk in there. It'll stick to my boots so bad I won't be able to move. We're expecting and hoping that our crops are at least average this year, but we're not going to have a mega bumper crop just due to too much rain and not enough sunshine, to be honest with you. We've got some beans out there that are a little bit short, or at least shorter than, than what we'd like, which is the reason we put on the uh, five finger quick tines for May West on the reel on our new, on our new Draper header. And now today, what we're going to be doing is installing the new wind system that we've invested in to really help blow those shorter beans into the draper belt. We had talked to some local farmers here who have run that wind system for a long time, and they said just go ahead and do it. According to them, if they combine without that on because they do some custom harvesting with wheat where they don't run that, that wind system. Hello. As I was saying, we've got a couple farmers in the area that I talked to that were kind of buddies with that said, uh, go ahead and get that air system. You're not going to regret it. Whenever they take theirs off, they notice a pretty big difference. So they're pretty happy with it. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to put a new air system on our new Draper header. And we got the quick tines on there. And hopefully, no matter how short these soybeans are in spots, we're going to be able to feed them right in and, and not lose anything. This is the one, this is the one you wanted, right? Yep. Yep, that's the one. Got it. All right, that'll work. Got to get this time lapse set up, right? There's our stuff. Jim, you want that other red one in here? We were low on engine oil last week when we did the truck work. Now we got the tanks moved over here, the oil tanks, and filled up yesterday. So Jim's running the trucks back through the shop just to do oil changes. Everything else is ready to go. He even wiped down the dash. Look at that. That is nice. I can see it pretty decent from up here. Can you? Yep. Okay. I'll know if it's coming out. Oh yeah, I will. <laughs> as soon as it runs down into your armpit, you'll know. Nothing coming out. Let's see if I can touch. Oh. Can't find any? Nope. So it's this front seal here that we got to put in. Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, everybody else is working on stuff. I may as well look at throwing a GPS and a computer into that combine because we're going to need to do that soon enough here. So I've got to figure out where the exact 2630 monitor is that I want in that machine. This one's got low sense. No section control, SF1. I gotta go find the one I need. The RTK monitor is down in that one, which needs to stay in that tractor, which means that that tractor has nothing in it right now. So I'll go this direction. I'm wondering if the one on the shelf in there with the row sense may be the one that I need, because I don't know if we have any others that have row sense on them. But I prefer to have an SF2 in there. Every time I do this, I gotta remember exactly what we have and don't have. So this one is an SF1 with section control, but no row sense. This is not the one I want. Before I get too crazy here, I am gonna message my dear guy, Tom, and find out if we need to update all these things because every once in a while, you gotta send them in, have all the software updated in them. So I'm gonna make sure I do that before I actually install it when I don't need to. Since I'm in here, I'm gonna remind myself of exactly what's in this tractor as well. That's the even cheaper signal. So, that's not the one I want there either. The one I want is on the shelf in there, so that's good. Just waiting now to hear from Tom to see if we need any updates. We shuffle these things around enough and they all get used for a couple specific things each season. So I gotta remind myself exactly what we have and where they go every year. May as well spend some time here cleaning the benches while they're going to work. It's hard to find good help. Filet mignon for lunch? Yeah, for lunch. Yeah? Filet mignon and Mountain Dew. Hey, FBN Todd, did you show up to work or are you just gonna spend, spend the day on your phone?
you want to explain to the viewers why you just made me pull off all my shiny new quick times? Because I wanted to see you do it. It looked like a lot That's of fun. That's all it was? That's all it was. I kind of, I had a hunch. Now I'm thinking we should put them back on. Well, we could do that too. <laughs> we were afraid that they were, well we know some of them were going to interfere with the air system once we get it set the way that we want to. And so now what we're going to do is set the air system right and then try to put on the, the times that will go in between the air tubes so that we get the benefit of both hopefully without screwing either one of them up. Well, those guys certainly know what's going on there a lot more than I do. And Dad and Jim have got the semi handle, so I'm going to work on this. This goes on the roof after I can raise the header and stand on the feeder house. And this gets mounted right up here and is the main control. I'm going to get this cord out of our way. And is the main control and data recording system for this whole machine. Computer one installed. Now I got to go get the RAM mount for my second system. I forgot to mention that Tom got back to me and said that the only thing that we need to update is the newest receiver we have, which is not this one, not the one that'll be run on this machine, so I can install all this, we're good to go. Here's my RAM mount for our field view that we're gonna put in over here. So I just gotta bolt that to the corner post. There we go. Now that just takes a simple standard iPad to be installed at a later date, along with a Bluetooth puck that goes back here to read the data from the machine that comes through here, well, this is doing the work. Looking good out there, guys. I figured I may as well install this Bluetooth puck while they're working. May as well just get it done now. Simple as that. May as well put these in. One-handed. There we go. So these are just drains or cleanouts for the hopper, which we pull out when we clean things at the end of every harvest. Just leave them open all year. I better check this side too, because there's a couple on this side that I have forgotten open before. Usually you don't make more than a couple of rounds before you realize something's going on. Those guys, right there, no good. I gotta put something in there. So the question is, where are these pieces? Dad doesn't want to answer and tell me where those covers are. And I got to check with Becky. Apparently something's weird on a video, so I got to micromanage that. Aw, look at the kitties. What are you, you're not even their mom. What are you, well, I guess that's nice of you. Where's, where's mom at? That's confusing. Hey, little guy, it's cold out this way. Go this way. Go back here. Get her. There you go. Place your bet, Onyx. Who's gonna win? Anna seems lazy. Seems lazy? Oh, right oh, for the oh, right oh, for the ankle. Oh, oh. Oh, come on. Oh, right after the neck. I'll put ten dollars on the big one. Well, our Crary guys took off for the night. I'm pretty sure they wanted to get to the bar. So they're gonna come back. I'm just messing with you guys, but that I know that's where you're headed. They're gonna come back in the morning. And uh, we're gonna finish this deal up. We probably got, sounded like two to three hours left on this. And then hopefully uh, I'll finish a few, button up a few things on the actual machine here and then we'll get it out of the shed and hopefully fire this thing up and actually get it spinning over for the first time this year. Jim's got some truck parts to work on over here. We got some brand new batteries for that truck and some other things going in there. So tomorrow's gonna be another busy day. We're gonna finish this up and uh, we'll, we'll continue here in the next scene. Morning. We got a bit of a project going over here. We need new flaps on everything on this truck. All new, look at that, plastic ones that aren't gonna rot out the way the old ones did. Shiny new batteries, and uh, probably should replace this. Chicks are gonna dig this truck when we're all done here. Be honest, did you guys close down one of the bars last night? Well, Tim did. That's why he's over there. Again. That's why he's overtaking a nap on the trailer. Well, everyone's kind of got their places. I'm going to 
take the grease gun here and continue throwing some grease at this thing. We'll hit the fun ones first. Up here. It's like having my own fort down in here. That's the toughest one done. Looks like the axle breakage sensor is still in place. That's good. And you, and you, stay. That's just a little throwback for some of my old fans out there. You guys want to see a grease gun trick? One-handed. All you gotta do is get yourself a Lumax heavy-duty 1403 quick coupler. I got mine right off Amazon. They make it in a longer version as well, and they also make all kinds of cool things for, uh, for filters and oil, including a set of strap wrenches that I got in case I ever have another issue like I had with the sprayer. But that won't happen again, will it? You need some holes over here, Jim? Yeah, I got just the thing. That one was almost, yeah, it's, it's almost half, good. Like <laughs> right. Other side too? Yep. So you should be able to do all of your controls uh, with our handy little key fob here. Nice. Um, if you want manual controls in your cab, which it comes with the system, do uh, you mind if I mount it right there? Just two screws into the backer board there? Yeah, no, that should work. Oil is fresh and good. Filters were all changed over winter. Well, the machine is mostly ready at this point. I'm just kind of letting these boys finish up what they're doing here with the wind system. And while they're doing that, I'm gonna tinker around here with the Green Star display and make sure I got all the settings set. To what I need them to be at. You boys about done yet? One part to go. Right here, man. This is it. This is it. Simple as that. Well, according to everybody on the internet, this only took like 12 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Well, it. just so they know, it was more like about 15. So. 15 minutes? Yeah. That's still fairly impressive. <laughs> there it is, final bolt, right? Let's go harvesting. This goes better than it did when we put it on the combine. Then this thing looks massive from in here now. Make sure I don't turn too sharp and whack the auger on the wall, because that would be a bummer. Okay, I need to see my pads. It's definitely slightly more difficult to see the pads on the trailer now. So the reason we took that off is because that is a 40 foot header, meaning it's probably 43 feet wide. And this is a 36 foot door. No matter how you try and wiggle it, it doesn't work. So this is the way we gotta do it. Look out, Anna. Okay, we're gonna get ready to fire this thing up. I've gotta run it through some calibrations first. I'd like to take it down out of the yard because 
it likes to spread a lot of spread a lot of dust. Any other farmers out there get really nervous when you fire up the combine for the first time of the year? Like there shouldn't be anything wrong, but you're just nervous about it because you don't want there to be a tool laying inside the combine or something somewhere. So you shut everything off, you crack the door, and you flip it on quick. And you shut it off right away to make sure you don't hear any clattering, thudding, hammering, which I didn't. Coming back on. There we go. Now I'm going to start up the header that I've never started before. The back of the machine is moving at idle. Okay, spin this so you can see it. Here goes nothing. On and off. Ooh, that's pretty. Okay, now. If you notice that, you're going to want to shut her down as soon as you can because a lot of times that slip clutch will go at that point because, sure. you know, right now, you know, about 40 horsepower is what you're going to be using for a 40 foot head. It, that's kind of a, an estimate. Yeah. But when that blows off, it's you get close to about 90 to 100 horsepower. It's going to all of a sudden go when you got no back pressure right. against that. Right. Um, and, and that will kind of make your slip clutch slip. Okay. So, okay. But start with it wide open. Start with it wide open and keep feathering it back until you notice the crop isn't coming into the head like you like it. Okay. And then go back up just a little bit and that'll be where you want to run it. Whatever the minimum amount of air right. is that you need yeah. to do the job. And as conditions change, you're probably going to have to adjust that slightly. I mean, you know, you get into a little heavier crop, you might need to up a little bit. Okay. Uh, or, you know, you get into uh, where maybe there's a little more, you know, moisture like what we got going on right now. Yeah. You might need to run a little more air. Okay. So, now to mess with my calibrations because it looks like everything was moving. So, calibrations. It's a warm dress? Yeah. Good. Well, I hate to do it, but I had to cut those guys short because Isla and I have some appointments in town that we got to take care of. And we want to get them done before the place is closed. One of those includes updating this 6,000 receiver. Can you keep an eye on that for me, Isla? All right, you make sure that it doesn't fly around in here, okay? That doesn't fly. Right, I won't and drive too break. crazy. And break, that's right. We're gonna take that to the tractor store. Look at how cute she looks today. She had school pictures. Did you smile nice? Good. So we're gonna go knock those things out, run around, do a bunch of stuff, and then come back here. You have to put on tractors. Have to put on tractors? Oh, that piece, they, you're right. That is what you put on tractors. That's yeah. for sure. Then we're gonna come back and tinker with this thing a little bit more. I'd like to get some of those quick tines put on there, figure out how I'm supposed to move the reel up and down because now that button changes the belt speed and the feeder house speed. So I don't know how to move the reel up and down. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there laughing at me, but I've never had a, a Draper belt on, on this machine. So I don't know how to move it. Haircut, done. Isla says it always looks the same. I, that's not true. Sometimes it looks way more Lloyd Christmassy. No, all the time it looks the same. Post office done. A fire truck. A fire truck. Dark. Yes. Car wash. They're putting rainbow on it again. They're putting rainbow on the truck? Yeah, now they're dropping it off. Oh, good. I hope it doesn't stay that way. And oil change complete. I know. I don't change my own oil, but that's only because I don't have the tornado insertion device for the special tornado and thunderstorm oil that this Chevy Silverado takes. Isla, where are we? Hit the curb. At the tractor store. We are at the tractor store. Are you excited? Yeah. <laughs> Let's do it. I got the shields I needed. We got the 6,000 updated. And Isla... Isla bought a brand new combine. She didn't even trade one in. 
She bought a brand new S690 with tracks. Came with a corn header, a soybean header, and a brand new JNM header trailer. Can you show it to him, Isla? She bought it straight out. Didn't even finance it. Figured we'd drive through back here and check out the lot. They got some pretty interesting stuff sitting around here today. Wouldn't that be nice? And now back at the FSA office for a stop to pay off my CCC loan on my soybeans that are remaining in the bin because that loan is coming due and we aren't gonna sell those beans this year, but I still have to pay off the note that I have with them. So that's what I'm here to do. Isla, are you excited about that? The check has been written. <laughs> Isla and I are back home. She's excited to hop in that combine. And we're gonna fire up that header again and kind of take a look at it. Those guys got that boot back on that blew off. I think actually what happened was the clamp on it hadn't gotten tightened. So when it got air pressure in there, it just blew it off. But we're gonna run it, check a couple things, see if it'll let me do some calibrations right now and tinker with it. And then uh, probably back it in the shed just to keep the combine out of the rain for now. I did get a lot of questions on Instagram about why we're doing this and what exactly this thing is. So sometimes I forget that a lot of my followers, thankfully, are not actually farmers or come from other places where they farm differently. What this is is an air system, actually, that will blow air through these yellow tubes and will set it to blow right down on the sickle bar, down in the bottom. And then in short, dry soybeans, it will help blow those into the draper head. Now some guys say with a draper head it's not necessary. Certainly with a draper head it's not super necessary the way it, it can be with a with an auger style head. But we have a couple of neighbors that run them and do a lot of custom harvesting with them and according to them once you run one you will never want to run it without one again. Um, so we decided to go for it. This was something we decided to invest in here and we wanted to put on here and I'm excited to try it. I'm excited to run it. I did get some questions as well about uh, weight and if there has to be a counterweight on it. This is all aluminum. With all these tubes on here, we just used two guys, one on each end for each of these tubes to lift it up in there. So they're not very heavy. We definitely don't need any counterweight on. One of the other questions is where does the air come from? It comes through the tubes on the side here, down the back, and gets driven actually off the feeder house of the combine through this fan. So this is actually driven off of the, the uh, PTO shaft coming out the side of the feeder house on the combine to spin this, this, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this centrifugal fan here, blow the air up through there and distribute it out through the head. So I am excited to try this thing out. Isla, are you excited to try it out? Uh, yes. Oh, awesome. What about you, Cat? <laughs> She's not going to try it. She's not going to try it? No. Oh. Come on, cat. You're not gonna try it. That cat's not gonna try it. Okay. Too heavy. Too heavy. Cat's just too heavy. I also wanted to point out the brush kit that we installed at the back of the header. With the air system, you can have issues with it blowing too much chaff or too too many beans into the back here, and you can have issues with the uh, with the draper belts. So what this brush kit does is stop anything from blowing off the back side of the belt and it's got the brushes to keep the stuff in line until it flows to the center. It goes up and down and around, all good things. We better get some heat going in here, huh, Isla? It's freezing cold in here. Yeah. Oh, the cat, cat didn't like that noise. I still have not found out how to control the reel going up and down instead of just adjusting the belt speed, so I'm not sure how to do that on this header. So I'm just gonna unhook it, get it on the trailer, because I got about a half an hour before I gotta get my other daughter to gymnastics, and we got rain coming. So I wanna get this thing in, so I'm just gonna unhook it here, but I get a, a lot of people asking, how much is it to unhook? And I will show you. So this is new, this is part of the air system. There's two quick electrical connections right here. And then this is the main function for everything with the header, simple as that. Sit over there, sit over there. I gotta make sure Isla doesn't push any buttons while she's in there. That could be bad. This PTO shaft right here, can you see that? This PTO shaft right here is what drives the head, the reel and the sickle cutter. 
Now we head over to the other side. Normally we wouldn't have to, but there is a PTO shaft on the other side that we need to unhook because that is the shaft that drives this air system. There we go. And that's it, we're unhooked. Now the much trickier part I have found with this header, and even more so now that we've got this air system tubing in the way, is getting it on the trailer. It's a lot fussier to actually get it off of the feeder house, off the machine. Grandpa showed up and he's gonna be a better driver and I'm gonna be a better spotter. So we're gonna tag team this deal. We are hooked. Who parks a combine crooked? What is that? Good help is hard to find. Didge, what happened to the front half of your pet rabbit? Is it okay? Hey, what are you gonna do with the back half of a rabbit? All right, Isla, we're just gonna leave this thing here tonight because it's raining now. It's just gonna sit outside somewhere else, so we'll deal with it later, but man, that is gonna pick up chicks right there. Woo! Okay, I'll hurry.